Okay, uh, now now we're all ready. So uh, Qian Chen is going to be talking about the interlaminar uh, endoscopic fusion, and Ray Gardaki is going to be talking about the transforaminal interbody fusion. So Qian, why don't you take it away? All right. Hi, everyone. I, first of all, thank you uh, for inviting me. It's really a pleasure to be here. So let's go directly uh, go right to the endoscopic fusion. Uh, so. To me, you know, there are three goals of uh, endoscopic spinal fusion. First one is uh, no harm. So safety, safety, safety. That's number one. Number two, you want to achieve good fusion. So this is where the endoscopic technique really shines because it's really enable you to do a very good uh, discectomy and end plate prep. As a matter of fact, you can actually go all the way anteriorly to the ALL, you can release ALL under direct uh, endoscopic visualization, so uh, achieve better lordosis. Uh, that's your anterior release. Number three, you want to uh, achieve adequate decompression. So depending on where the pathologists are, you can choose transforaminal or interlaminar approach. Uh, endoscopic fusion is a very is a workhorse for me for the especially for L5 S1 level. Um, that um, uh, I use uh, uh, interlamina, which is a plea for approach. When usually when you need uh, dorsal decompression, it's either bilateral or unilateral. But most times we do bilateral decompression. It's the same concept that we. Uh, have been talking about during the course, it's a unilateral approach, bilateral decompression. Um, you actually can carry the decompression all the way to the contralateral foramen. You actually can also drill the contralateral parts to do your, um, to have a very good release posteriorly. So uh, for, for me, the, my interlaminar approach I, the workflow is I do my bone work, discectomy, and place the expandable interbody cage, and then place uh, screws percutaneously. Um, the, uh, the portal I use, I use the uh, lower level uh, screw hole where you uh, make the incision for the percutaneous screw fixation. I use one of that portal for my uh, uh, discectomy, laminectomy, and uh, release. So it's usually um, just outside of, on the AP view, it's outside, you know, lateral to the pedicle. And then on the lateral, it's right in line with the disc space. Because when you do fusion, you really want your, uh, it's a straight shot to the disc space. You do not want the angle cranial or caudal. So, because that's you can uh, damage the end plate. So, um, that's my uh, workflow. Um, and, uh, Ray, you want to talk about the transferaminal? Uh, sure. So, uh, the transferaminal approach for the fusion is pretty much like the transferaminal approach for a discectomy. I'll, I'll show you in my lecture that I like to use the pre-op imaging, the pre-op MRI imaging to plan the trajectory so that your implant, so that you go through the spot you want to decompress and your implant ends up where you want it to end up. Uh, a little harder to do with the cadaver because I don't know the exact size and depth, but uh, we'll, take a, we'll take a shot at that. Um, so basically you want to get into the frame and to your decompression, identify the most at-risk nerve, nerve root, which with a traditional transcambin fusion is gonna be the exiting root. You wanna protect that root, and then you wanna do your discectomy and put your implant in. So, uh, Xian, do you wanna show the, uh, the beginning steps of, uh, for x-ray, for just the inner laminar, uh, what you're gonna be doing? Absolutely. Or, or do you wanna do, Ray, do you, since the x-ray's already there, do you wanna start, since already, it's already there? Yeah, we can okay. start. <clears throat> so I like to get a nice orthogonal view of the disk space and, and get an image. We're going to go to L4 or 5 here. They shot there. So you can see we're lined up with the disk. I, I draw this line, and then we get a lateral. Uh, can you show the x-ray, please? Can you guys see that? We're not, we're not getting the screen here, so I don't know what you guys are seeing. 
Uh, we see the AP now. Okay. And then under the lateral, what I want to do, one more shot. I want to completely bisect the disc shot there all the way to the front of the disc space. Can you see that shot? Because you don't want to cheat one end plate versus the other. You want equal excursion to each end plate. Otherwise, you're going to dig into one end plate and you're not going to clear off the other one. So you want this to be dead nuts, split the disc all the way. And then those two lines, we talked about this in the lab, those two lines define a plane, so you can always look at those two lines and visualize the plane of the disc and make sure that you're parallel to that. Go back to AP. Again, normally at my starting point, I would use, a, uh, I would use the MRI to plan out the trajectory. Um, since we don't have that, I kind of, you do a little Kentucky windage here. So 18 gauge needle, I'm gonna put this in, go so down to my disc space. Ray, when you marked that lateral view, what did you mark on the skin there? You just marked the... Just, just a line. The trajectory, okay. Exactly where that is to the front of the disc. So okay. by having that line on the side of the body, I know the depth of my disc space. So I shouldn't be working past that, right? The last place you want to be is anterior to the ALL. Um, and that lateral line and the, the line on the lateral part and the line on the AP defines a plane. That's the plane of the disc. So I do this so I can visualize the, the disc plane so that when, when my instruments are working, it should be, they should be parallel to both lines at all times because you're gonna be in the disc. If you notice that, the, that your scope is pointed in a different direction, you're in the wrong spot. So it's an external cue that keeps you working in the same plane. And so how, how do you mark your lateral entry point, um, you know, for, for this transframinal approach? Like the actual, where you put the needle in? Yeah, so I plan that out on the, on the MRI okay, okay. so that I, I plan a trajectory for where I want the foramen to be compressed, uh, okay, <laughs> and uh, where I want the implant to end up, and I'll show that in my lecture. Uh, I've, I've got a little, you know, uh, animation that shows that, but right now we're, we're just sort of, sort of guessing here. So ultimately what I want is on the lateral view, I want to fill my disc, and on the AP view, I want my implant to go from meter wall to pedicle to meter wall to pedicle, so it's obliquely the largest surface area it can be. So I like to, I put the needle in under AP imaging, like however you do this, do it the same way every time. The way you do your needle insertion for transferaminal, that's how you should do it. Uh, but I'm gonna guess on where this should be. So give me a shot there on their AP. And I need to go more caudally, shot there. So there I'm bumping into the facet, I believe. So we're gonna go lateral. So now between the AP and lateral, I'll know where the tip of my needle is. And it looks like we're very dorsal. So I want to slip ventral to that shot there. Shot there. No. Ray, do you ever use uh, the bullseye view, just straight going oblique, um, so you can sneak ventral to the SAP? No, I always use AP and lateral. This is the same way I do my transferamal epidural injections and the same way I do uh, my transferamal discectomies. So back to AP. So now I, I, I should be on the disc space. And basically what I want to be is over the top of the pedicle, about the medial particular line. Back to the same spot, yeah. Yeah, so kind of just over the pedicle. Shot there. One more. All right, so I'm, I'm a little bit medial on this approach, but that'll be okay because I can do a foraminotomy and medialize it. So, and then this is like anything else, guide wire. And just back the scope up a little bit for me so I can get underneath here. So Ray, you're not doing a uh, foraminoplasty at this point, right? You just go direct into the cabin. Well, so you could ream it if you want, but like I said, I don't normally use reamers, so I like to put the, put the scope in, identify my exiting route. If I'm gonna do a foraminotomy, I do it with the drill under direct visualization. And you do it awake, right? Yes. Well, so 
so yes, all of my transfer ML stuff I do awake. So they're, they're lightly sedated at this point um, so that I know I'm not pushing on anything I shouldn't be or putting pressure on the DRG. So, so you, uh, Ray, you said your medial on your entry point compared to what you normally have it. So where would you normally like to have that needle um, when you're looking at that APX ray? A little bit more in the medial particular line. Mm -hmm. But if you've, got, if you've got a patient with foramal stenosis, that's as far medial as you're going to get because the foramen's going to, it's like an awning and you're trying to get under the awning and you can't. So this is not an unreasonable spot to start. It's going to require resecting a little SAP to medialize the, the starting point of the disc if that makes sense. So you want your cage going in um, for just medial to the pedicle going all the way across, is that correct? Yeah, so I want, I want the implant to end up medial wall of the pedicle to medial wall of the pedicle, ultimately. Shot there. Pretty good, we're staying orthogonal to the, to the disc space. I felt like I slipped past the pedicle, or past the facet, check a lateral. No, we're going to go with, uh, with this cannula so I can just look around. We'll, we'll really do that to do the foraminotomy, create the starting point. And I think it's that. an important point to mention that Ray really relies on the MRI because I think a lot of questions we could ask is, you know, how do you plan your trajectory? And honestly, I used to make these lines, but me, I almost always use the MRI, the axial cuts. I don't know about anyone else here who does. What about you? Well, yeah. you know, a lot of people do 45 degrees, so it's just the middle of the disc laterally and the same, you know, you know, on the dorsal surface. I do typically two-thirds in the back, so I like to be a little bit steeper. So if you, if, so yeah, so if you don't have, like, that pre-op MRI, like in this cadaver, if you did a lateral fluoroscopic x-ray with the, the measuring wand and put it to the center of the disc and then made sure you're completely perpendicular to the beam of the fluoroscope, then you measure the distance where the posterior skin in that plane intersects that measuring device, then that's the distance that you would measure on the MRI from the skin for 45 degrees, which is kind of what you want for the fusion. Okay, yeah, and so, yeah, and you typically to build that uh, extra centimeter or two in, you could just measure to the front of the disc instead of the middle of the disc. Yeah, so that's more lateral than I want to be, but in the situation of uh, foramal stenosis, that may be as far as you can get, like a 5-1, for instance, if the crest is in the way. So um, at this point, we, can, we should be able to leave this in. And give me, a, give me a scope. Just back the image up a little bit. Ray, do you think it's a, a time before we could bring the scope in to see Shen work while you do your foraminotomy, or do you want to keep the x-ray in right now? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, we, we can do that. I don't, I don't Come need to look at x-ray. Come over. Mm -hmm. So why don't we have the x-ray go to Xi'an, and then we can have him show us the, the inner laminar first approach. A pituitary? So as I said, medial lateral wise, I do use uh, you know one of the screw hole. Oh, too much, Ferguson. Okay, <laughs> push in. Uh, to the caudal level, screw hole as my uh, endoscopic entry point. So you know, it's a matter of four incisions or five incisions. Push in. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. All right. Uh, that's good. That's good. Thank you. That's good. All right. Can you uh, just take a peek? Uh, uh, just move towards the uh, toward the head a little bit. Uh, you can move the the that thing a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that, that, can you do the Ferguson view? Just tilt, yeah, just like that. Okay, good, perfect. Okay, so uh, pull back towards you a little bit. Okay, so um, so if I'm doing uh, L5S1, uh, take another shot there. Okay, good. So I'm just a little bit lateral to the uh, to the to the S1 pedicle, and then. On the, on the lateral, 
Um, just so everyone's aware, he has a scope on the above level because that level's already prepared. But um, just for the interest of time, we have that scope already ready. But I think he's going to show the bottom level first, just to line Come for lack. Mm -hmm. Water flow. I got shit all over the scope. No, he's going to do the landmarks. I have no water flow. So you either got to get a new. So when you do this uh, X-ray and fluoroscopy with needles, you actually can do your T-lip uh, a block. Because I do that for all my uh, fusion patients. Um, okay, no, no, no. Okay. It's dribbling. All right. Uh, take a shot there. Uh, hold on, hold on. Um, move toward the head a little bit. So my uh, my needle is way too low. Grasper. Um, take a shot there. Okay. <clears throat> Hold on. So this is similar to the transforming approach. You want uh, the trajectory uh, parallel to the disk space. Take a shot there. I have no flow, no water flow. Yeah. So gravity from here, times better. I know if I cheat my uh, incision uh, approximately. Just make a 1.5 centimeter incision. Uh, I can get into the disk space and put the cage there. So, um, and later on, uh, after the cage placement, I use the same incision for that screw, for the S1 screw. So that would be the approach. So, so, um, so uh, Shen, can you again? Um, I think we might have missed the the AP starting point for where you were. I I know you're just lateral the facet. Just lateral the facet. Okay. Can we, have right. an, can we have an x-ray to show that, just so everyone can see? Can you show the other x-ray? The AP x-ray? Ben, can you move the image so we can look a little bit lower on that? Right now I've got air in the system, and I've got bubbles. Yeah, you, you, you can, can see the see S1 it. pedicle there. Mm -hmm. uh, move it back a little bit so they can see. Burner? You see, uh, like it's barely flowing. I've got air bubbles everywhere. <laughs> you just, you just hook it up to gravity. Like there would be a thousand times. Yeah, better. you can see that the, you know, the 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 big needle on your right hand side, that's right lateral to the S1 pedicle. Just okay. at the corner, at the yeah there. Okay, there we go. Right lateral to the S1 pedicle. You got okay. it. Yeah. Nice. So okay. and then I put my dilation to your regular interlaminar approach. So you, are, you, you, you start a little bit lateral than your regular interlaminar approach. But I, I start my uh, lam, la, uh, laminotomy or facetectomy um, uh, medially and work to the contralateral side and to the ipsilateral side, work, work your way laterally. So, mm -hmm. so next, I think I'm just going to take you on a tour. Uh, you can, you can uh, actually, no, don't come out. Uh, because we're ready to uh, burner next. So if you can connect the. Uh, so through the magic of television, we've skipped ahead 30 minutes. Magic cook. So I'm going to take you on a tour. Okay. Uh, can you see the? You, you can see the image, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So. So, Abiding. see that, that's Abiding. the ipsilateral traversing nerve. Upbiting grasper, yeah. Uh, can I have the grabber? Just give me a big grab. Give me a straight one on that, yeah. Um, so, it, I agree. So, for this approach, we want to minimize the retraction of the sequel sac or the traversing nerve. So, when I do the uh, discectomy, first of all, I leave the ipsilateral uh, ligamentum flavum, leave it there. I take that out an, until after I place my cage. So that acts as a protective curtain uh, for my uh, 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 ips, uh, for the ipsilateral traversing nerve. And um, I already did the decompression laterally all the way. Let me show you where the pedicle are. See, that's uh, can I have a grabber? A grabber? Yeah. 
So where now I turn my scope laterally, I mean uh, distally. See, that's the, oops, that's the L5N plate. If you look, I don't know what happened there. The pedicle you can feel just right there, okay? So, and then um, this is the, you know, you have enough room to do your discectomy. Of I, course, I how big uh, this what, what space you, you create, the safety zone, the safety zone you create depending on how large your footprint uh, uh, would be. I usually use an expandable cage. So, um, and majority of my uh, uh, PLIF fusion, endoscopic fusion is for L5S1. So, you, you have a decent amount mm -hmm. of room. I mean, yeah. for the upper levels, I prefer lateral. But for L4-5, you know, like here, uh, if you want to work your way ladder, you see that's your exiting nerve, okay? And this is your uh, traversing nerve. That's your Cambrian triangle. It's already after discectomy. If I go to the contralateral side, I already did my decompression. Let me show you. Um, <coughs> Chang, what drill bit do you use for that? Because it's a lot of bone resection. So uh, do you use a cutter there or do you use I a use a drill. I, I uh, it's a streak robber. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me take out some of the fragments. What, what type of drill? Is like a, a diamond drill bit? Or no, I use the, 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 the side cutting olive cutter. OK, OK, thank you. Yeah. See, this actually, you're looking at the contralateral. Hold can on. I get, can I get the x-ray? I'm going to show you the sequel fact. I'm going to see, show you the sequel fact. Shin. Yes. Quick question. So on your ipsilateral side decompression, yes. you showed us the exited route. Yes, so I did. You resected a fair amount of the SAP to be able to visualize that. Can you go yes. back? So show us the top of the L5 pedicle, if you would, on your ipsilateral side. Okay. So we can so get ex an estimate of how much of the SAP you truly resected. Well, I, I, I do it a flash with, can I have the kerosene? I do it a flash with, you know what, give, just give me the drill. Like, give me the drill. Yeah. So I want to orient you. So the, the 6 o'clock right now it's cranial. is the, um, that's OK. You can take the x-ray out. Uh, I don't need it because I know where I am. Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, if the drill is not ready, I can have the kerosene. I can have the kerosene. Oh, got it. I have the kerosene. Uh, drill is ready. Okay, so Burn. now I turn my scope 90 degrees. I'm looking distally and trying to look laterally too. So, see, my, my protective sleeve is against the traversing nerve. I'm working my way. I'm drilling my way laterally. Do you, do you have a preference, maybe better said, do you have a preference about how much of the pedicle you want to see, like the L5 pedicle? Do you want yeah, to I would like to see the, the medial wall of the pedicle, definitely. Sometimes, you know, you, if you do more drilling laterally, you can see the, uh, now I'm looking laterally. Yeah, they're, they're looking at that. So, um, let me show you the pedicle. Uh, Shin, a quick question for you. I know that you know yes. with a standard interlaminar approach, we're you know in the interlaminar window. But you started lateral um, to the S1 pedicle, right in the bottom one. So in this in this case, it was lateral to the L5 pedicle when, when you started. Right. What, what this is, the, is the L4-5 level. So what did you start doing? The well, first thing you see, just because we haven't seen that part, you prepared all this beautifully. But what is the fir you, first thing you see is the facet joint, and then you start going straight through the facet joint. Or what are you doing? Um, to create this, uh, this large, uh, you know, um, area of decompression? Actually, I, I start medially wow. mm. um, from the midline, work my way laterally. Only unlock one thing at a time, please. Okay. So um, that's at 9 o'clock there, uh, about actually uh, 10 o'clock there, that's your pedicle. Just right, right, right next to next to my uh, kerosene. Okay, that's the L5 pedicle. I got it. I got it. And uh, only unlock one thing at a time, please. 
Now I'm turning it back. Shen, can you yeah. tell us um, what is the typical width of your implant? 10 millimeters, 8 millimeters? Uh, actually, the usually I use uh, for L5S1, I try to use 12 or 14. Height or width? Width. Uh, uh, grabber. Big grabber. So, so when I, uh, I usually, after I do the, the discectomy uh, decompression, before I put the trial or the cage, I switch that to the uh, a matrix tube, like a 14 millimeter matrix tube. Uh, and then I place my scope through that 14 millimeter matrix tube, make sure the nerve root is not in the way uh, to place the trial or the cage. So here, you see that? That's your L5, we're doing L4, 5 level. So that's your L5 nerve root. Uh, the L4 is over there, okay? And uh, can I have the, uh, so, so that's, and uh, you can actually, under direct visualization, you can put this, the cannula, manipulate it into the disk space sometimes. And uh, uh, so, like this way, I'm doing minimal retraction to my nerve root while doing the discectomy. You, it's in the view, but it's not being retracted. So, uh, my goal is to minimize any uh, nerve root re retraction. You can also, t you know, doing like this, okay? Um, and you can, uh, can I have the uh, drill? So there's an overhanging end plate at L5. I can drill it off. You know, once again, the, the, the protected cannula, the protected sleeve is against the nerve, okay? So you can use this drill actually for your discectomy. And uh, see, if you look anterior, uh, into the disc space, I already did some of the discectomy work, and you can work all the way anteriorly to see the uh, ALL, actually, and do the, for your ALL release. So, so at this point, I'm ready to place the cage. So uh, to, to place the, the cage, I usually do the, uh, the uh, the turning of your endoscope, because for that period amount of time, it's okay to retract where you're putting the trial and the uh, cage in. So at this point, I'm ready to put the cage in. So, Shen, uh, what, what uh, endoscope do you typically use? Do you use like a, a, a small, uh, you know, the, in, the... No, this is a central stenosis Central scope. stenosis, so a larger endoscope. Right. This Working is a... Channel is about a uh, has a, the cannula has about... 10 or 11 millimeters. 11 millimeters, okay. Big grabber, big grabber. Um, and we can wait for the x-ray to place the cage uh, because we, we want to look at the lateral. <laughs> so, Ray, do you, are you ready to, to show us where you are with your transforaminal approach? Not quite. Not quite. Okay, okay. so you can uh, bring the x-ray here, uh, bring the lateral. I'm going to put the, the cage in. How is the irrigation working? Yeah. So. Once again, you know, during your work, if you have to do retraction, just periodically retract it, uh, turn it back, give the, uh, the traversing nerve root a break. See that? That's, you can come, come for lateral directly. So, Shen, when you're putting this, uh, this cage in, are you, I mean, a lot of people say at this point you have to kind of go on blind faith, and, or do you visualize the cage going in? What's your, what's your strategy for the cage insertion? No, the, for, the, for the monoportal, I can't. Mm -hmm. You can use a biportal to visualize the cage going in. Do you but typically for, do that, or do you feel like you just, you, you, you have enough protection from the, the ligamentum that you left there? Or? Yes, because you can see that my bevel of my scope is, the nerve is behind my scope. You see that? Yes. Yeah. You see that? That's the nerve. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm just uh, retracted uh, briefly, medially, um, and now I'm ready to place the place the the cage. And for that, for the monitor, for the uniportal uh, 
endos and endoscopy um, can you take a lateral yeah see uh, take another lateral it's not a perfect lateral um, let me see uh, just whack toward the head a little bit yeah just just a little bit uh, that's good. So, that's good. So, Jan. Yes. Can you, so, we all know that um, you know fusions not just putting instrumentation, but biology and stuff. At what point do you like suck out the fluid, put bone graft in there? Because you know. Oh this, yes. This implant can't post. Yeah. That. Before I put an implant in for for this implant, I always re uh, put a uh, put a uh, extra small BMP and uh, bone graft anteriorly, and before I place this uh, this cage. And uh, Shane, you mentioned before that the, this, the, the concept of the ALL release. Right. You know, uh, are you just thinning it out? Are you doing a release? Or, or, cause I mean, if you thin it, if you release it, it's concerned of bone grafts migrating anteriorly. So w what's your thought on that? Yeah, that's a great question. So there's a the trick. I just, uh, using a pin field, puncture holes on the ALL, multiple holes. Uh, and then I rely on the, when I put the expandable cage in there, let it stretch anteriorly. So that's already, so you're not making a big hole anteriorly, but you created enough uh, uh, release that still keep the bone graft take shot. It's a borrowing from uh, the pie crusting technique in total. Exactly, yeah. the pie craft. Well, yeah. Orthopods here. So at this point, take shot there. Yeah. Um, should there? Should there? Okay, let's uh, let's expand it. So, so Jan, also you do a lot of work with that drill through the endoscope, and you know this implant that you're using it has some How do you percutaneous, it? like more aggressive, like shapers and curettes and stuff. Do you ever use those? Can you say that question again? Do you ever use the instrumentation that comes with this implant to do your disc prep? Like the expandable shapers and yes, reciprocating yes. turrets, as opposed to just doing all good, that with the drill. Good question. So, I do use them when the patient is young, have good bone quality, uh, and uh, have a pretty tall disc space. Because remember, if the disc space is really collapsed, and patient has uh, you know poor bone quality, you when you use those instruments, they're too aggressive. They can compromise the implant. So for those type of patients, I prefer doing discectomy under direct visualization with the endoscopic curette, uh, shavers. Uh, as you can see, so we can continue going up. Um, and at this point, you can also hammer it anteriorly uh, where you expand it. Take shot there. Yeah. Um, that's pretty good. Take shot there. Wow. I think I'm I'm going to stop there. Otherwise, I'm going to crash the end plate. <laughs> okay, let's take AP. Let's see where we are. And do you typically use two of these implants or one? Uh, no. Uh, the um, you can, but like one on each side or right. Just you can one. do it, but usually I just use. That's good. Pull back towards you. Pull back towards you. Pull back towards you. <clears throat> okay. Take shot there. Yeah, you can see that it's pretty good. Okay. Uh, it's not a perfect AP the end plate, but uh, you know, medial lateral wise, um, you're pretty good there. Okay. Okay, that's good. So Ray, are you ready for? Yeah. All right, let's go oh, to Ray let's, uh, and let's see collapse the... it. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Another our grasper yeah. back. Come on over with the X-ray. So confirm that we are where we think we are. So basically, I like to go into the foramen, clear it out, make sure that there's no nerve here, find my disc space, open my annulus, and then it's. Whatever system you're using, that's the system you're going to use to clear out your disk. There's some variability there. Thanks. Thanks. So 
So give me a picture there. Mm -hmm. There we go. So you see parallel to the disc, come lateral. Ben, uh, can you change the image a little bit? You see bit? how we medialize the uh, starting point? We're a little bit oblique on the x-ray, but kind of dealing with what we got with. Ben, can you table. get to the last AP we just took, Ben? Not, not that one. Okay, can you just take one more lateral x-ray just to show where we are? Okay. See, I'm in the disc there, back up here, shot. So, right there in the disc. All right. In the back to AP. And, and Ray, can you take one more AP X ray because we couldn't see the last one you took? Yeah. So, you can see the, you, can, you saw the lateral, right? Yeah, lateral's good. Okay, we'll get an AP here. You see the you see the AP kind of over the top of the pedicle. Perfect. So that as that implant advances, it's going to end up. It should end up medial wall of pedicle, medial wall of pedicle. So I can actually advance my cannula into the disc a little bit here. And give me a shot there, Grasper. So Ray, what's your workflow when you're are you doing this uh, this discectomy blind initially and then verifying with the endoscope, or are you just doing a combination? What's your what's your workflow for the discectomy? I like to uh, get a pathway cleared out under direct visualization, uh, get my annulotomy and get a basically a cannula docked in the disc space, making sure that I'm protecting the nearest root burner, and then uh, whatever implant so. Each implant company has their own sort of, uh, and each endoscopic company has their own sort of uh, equipment that you use to do your discectomy. So there's some variability there. So kind of whatever you're used to is typically what you're going to use. Um, large grasper. So now we're we kind of have our hole in the disc and our trajectory. Hey uh, Ben, can we get see the endoscopic picture? You can see I'm just, I'm just digging in the disc here. And this is a big, tall disc, which makes this a little more difficult because there's a lot of, a lot of space here. Hey, Ray, um, so you know, we have to move on because uh, you know, right. a, lab, a lab starts at 5 p.m. and I think nobody wants to give up any of the precious lab time. So you know, in terms of discectomy here right now, you can probably play there for another couple of hours to yeah. you know, dig out all so this stuff. Do you want to just uh, quickly put the cage in and sort of show us that? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do the one step. And then I switch over to the to the system. No, oh, great. I just lost my spot. Oh. <laughs> awesome. Picture there. Shot there. And one more. All right. Give me the dilator for the uh, the uh, the your your tube. I'm trying not to say any implant names. Picture there. Picture there. So give me a lateral. So now I'm, I've basically got the, oh wait, one more shot. It, it moved on me. Yeah, great. Lost the spot. Shot there. There we go. Let's go lateral. And then we'll use the auger and then the... There we go. So we're just docked in there. We have the little uh, inserter piece. So this has that. So this system's kind of nice because it's got a stop that kind of holds you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Pull that out. And let me, you have just a brush. Give me just a brush. I'm going to just hit this with a wire brush real quick.
So you can adjust the depth of these things, but these brushes are nice because they picture. They debulk a lot of the disc shot there. Give me an AP real quick. So I want to see how I am across the disc space. So you see I'm towards the front portion of the disc. I want to be towards the medial wall of my contralateral pedicle. I'm going to use this instead of the auger because it should be a little bit faster. And then we'll put the bag in and then we'll fill it. Yeah, so you see how that's going across the medial wall of pedicle, the medial wall of pedicle? Yeah, yeah, we'll do a couple scrapes. So I'll get one use that. There we go. I think it'll be fine. Pressure on there. Yep. So now the implant goes in. Picture there. <clears throat> and I got to advance this a little bit. So. Ray, you want to tell us a little bit about you know this implant and what uh, you know you Shot think? There? Um, Ray, can you hear me? How do I get this uh, to advance a little bit? Ray. Yeah, what? You want to talk a little bit about implant and you know what footprint-wise and expandable capabilities? Uh, so this is the uh, um, shot there. It's, it's a mesh bag. Mm -hmm. Mesh bag. You put allograft bone in it, and it expands and fills the space that's available. Shot there. Which right now, there's not a lot of space available because we didn't get a, a complete disc. Yeah. So now that the implant's in. So tell us, so right now the bone graft is growing, so you have the expandable cage, the mesh cage already mm -hmm. in place, right? And so now you're inserting the allograft mm -hmm. filling that sort of leads to expansion of this cage. Can we get a lateral to see how this uh, expands? Picture there. Ray, Ray, you want to get a lateral to see the, the bag mm -hmm. expanding? One more picture there. Let's go lateral. Uh, quick question. I'm going to piggyback off of what um, Chris Young asked earlier. Um, obviously, fusion isn't about you know just putting a cage in. I'm struggling to figure out how you go ahead and do a good end plate preparation with bristles and whatever you just demonstrated right now. So um, typically it's under direct visual visualization the way I do it. Uh, there are endoscopic curettes that will back load into the, uh, into the scope. So I typically start with an auger. It's like a drill that you drill across the disk space to create space. Um, use the curettes to debulk. Um, the brushes are actually really handy for removing large amounts of loose cartilage. They're, they don't clean the end plate, but they clean the, the, the tall disc material. Um, and then under direct visualization with a curette is the way I like to do it. I like to just watch it and scrape. If you just kind of rub the end plate, the, the type 2 cartilage will peel off and you'll see the compressed cancellous bone underneath. And you'll see in my lecture pictures of what the end plates look like when they're prepped. And then... Um, you know, this system is actually designed to be percutaneous. So they have some nice, nice tools to prep the disc um, sort of under fluoroscopic visualization. And, uh, um, and, you know, I think for the interest of time, the reason why you don't see as much disc prep is because, you know, we're running a little bit behind. But usually when we do these endoscopic fusions, you see both end plates. You do really good disc prep. That's really one of the biggest values of the endoscope is you can really be sure you clear all that disc out. Yeah, I just haven't had a chance to clear yeah. the disc out. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the percutaneous instruments do really, they're really aggressive. And like Dr. Sh uh, Jian Shen said, they can be over aggressive. So it really cuts into the bone. So, so I think typically the way I do it, I, I do a blind, blind discectomy with all their, you know, percutaneous instruments, 
and I go back with my camera and endoscope and I clear out with the curettes and other and drills, et cetera. And I might do one more buff at the end. And usually when I'm done, I can see bleeding bone on both sides. So uh, I know I got the cartilage and the end plates. And I think this specific system is nice because it actually, it's specially made for the endoscope. This Shop system, there. you can actually plug in an endoscope fairly easily. It's, it's made for the endoscope. So um, that, that's one benefit of this system. So we'll fill it up, pull it out. There you go. This is not going to look very good because well, we didn't clean you're out doing, the disc. You're doing a very good disc. Ah, okay. Stay tuned. So. Uh, you guys want to look in there and see what it looks like, or a one-step dilator? I don't know. Can, can we get a lateral x-ray to see the final expansion? I think you, you put all the bone grafts in there, correct? You can't see it. Mm. Okay. Um, it didn't. It didn't expand because I didn't have the disc cleared out. So, no. well, uh, I think that in your talk we're going to be able to go a little bit more. Uh, we have a three, four talks on endoscopic fusion, so I'm sure we're going to hit all the high points. So, uh, thank you, Ray. That was great, and thank you, Shen, Dr. Shen. That was great. Um, we really appreciate that demonstration, and uh, we're going to move on towards the to the actual um, talks now. So.